smoke and mirrors. For all his smoke and mirrors, he is borrowing £198 billion pounds more than he planned in 2010. More borrowing to pay for three years of economic failure. More borrowing in just three years under this Chancellor than under the last government in 13 years, Mr Speaker. He used to say he would balance the books in 2015. Now he wants, now he wants us to congratulate him for saying he'll do it in 2019, Mr Speaker. With this government, it's clearly not just the badgers that move the goalposts, Mr Speaker. And, uh, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, on energy bills, on energy bills after their panicked and half-baked attempt to steal Labour's clothes. We are... Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, we know they're not very good at shooting badgers, they're not very good at shooting other people's foxes either, Mr Speaker. Because what is the truth? For three months, the Leader of the Opposition has been calling for an energy price freeze. And did the Chancellor announce an energy price freeze? No, he did not, Mr Speaker. Can he confirm? Can he confirm? that when the energy companies have already announced price rises of £120 this year, his policy will still see energy prices rise by £70 this winter. Mr Speaker, under this Chancellor, the only freeze this winter will be for millions of families and pensioners struggling to heat their homes with rising bills. Does he really think he can get away with tinkering at the edges. Yeah. Moving, moving green levies, his own party introduced off the bills and onto the taxpayer, and surprise, surprise, letting the energy companies completely off the hook, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. They're not paying a penny. They're not paying a penny. Doesn't he realise that for millions of hard pressed families, pensioners and businesses across our country, nothing less than a freeze will do, Mr Speaker. And rather than hard-pressed taxpayers, it should be the excess profits of the energy companies that pick up the tab, Mr Speaker. And, uh, and uh, as for the Prime Minister, as for the Prime Minister's flagship policy for families, a tax break for marriage. Why, why won't the Chancellor admit the truth and tell the Prime Minister that the policy won't even help the families the Prime Minister says it will? Because his own Treasury Minister has let the cat out of the bag. I have it here in black and white, Mr Speaker. The, uh, the Exchequer Secretary says just under one third of married couples will get the married couples tax allowance. Just, uh, just one in six families with children will benefit. And uh, contrary, contrary to the Prime Minister's claim, contrary to the Prime Minister's claim in this House a few weeks ago, a married couple where both are paying basic rate income tax will get no benefit at all, Mr. Speaker. Apologise. Apologise. No, uh, no, uh, no, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, no wonder, no wonder his own Chancellor of the Exchequer has this week told the Daily Telegraph he thinks the Prime Minister's policy is, and I quote, a turkey of an idea. A turkey. The Chancellor thinks the Prime Minister's policy is a turkey. Merry Christmas, Prime Minister. Merry Christmas. Mr Speaker, I have to say... Uh, 
down. Yeah, it just... It's very simple. It just lengthens the proceedings. Doesn't bother me. I very much enjoy chairing the proceedings. I think what members on both sides of the House will wish to consider is how the conduct is regarded by the public that we're here to represent. Mr Ed Balls. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I think on this one, the Chancellor's right. It is a turkey of an idea, Mr. Speaker. 